Hey guys, welcome back to another video here on Loft Sports. My name is Seth. Coming at you with another edition here on the Big Red Report, going over the Purdue game. Um, yeah, I don't even know where to start with this one. I'm still trying to decipher what kind of emotions I'm feeling. I was talking with Ty about this, and I don't know if I'm angry or I'm sad or if I've just more or less accepted that it is what it is right now and that we, again, suck this year. Um, completely not what I was thinking at all. I don't think any of us, I don't really think too many people in the national media were seeing this. Um, I think maybe at a worst case scenario, maybe people are saying seven and five potentially, a lot of the national people. Um, heck, Phil Steele had us in our Ro had us in his Rose Bowl game. That's obviously not going to happen. Um, so it just, it is what it is. It's another tough year uh, for us Nebraska fans. Um, we got beat by a two and six Purdue team. I mean, it is what it is. There's kind of no excuse for that, to be honest. Um, you're talking about a team whose longest drive of the year was, I think, 59 yards coming into the game. They had four touchdown drives of 82, 78, 96, and 89. And that's with turning the ball over twice as well. The second worst rushing attack in the whole country gave up 145 yards on the ground. And we they outrushed us by 17 yards. Um, completely inexcusable that those things are happening. Um, Adrian Martinez played a terrible game. I think it's the worst game I've ever seen him play. It's one thing when you have a, sh a shitty game, your first game of the year, a lot of hype coming in. I can almost forgive the South Alabama game, but, I mean, damn, you've started so many games here, and it's like you've never played before. There's something going on in his head. He's not decisive. And now not only is he not decisive, he's no longer accurate. He missed at least five wide-open passes the other day. Two of them, which would have gone for touchdowns easily, miss uh, Noah on one pass on a seam round. I'm sure you guys know what I'm talking about. And missed another one late in the game to Jack Stoll. Now, sure, eventually, you know, on that one he missed, it ended up in a touchdown. He rushed it in. But still, you can't have it because against better teams going forward, as long as he continues to be the quarterback, there's going to be better teams like Purdue who don't let you get away with those mistakes. I honestly think... Adrian needs to be benched. I understand that he's the guy, he's the face of our program, but right now he's not there mentally. Something needs to click in his head, and I'm not sure what it is. He looks lost out there. I don't know if he's going through his progressions, trying to be Peyton Manning, uh, Tom Brady, and not realizing that he's Adrian Martinez. He's playing the position like he's trying to be somebody else instead of who he is. He's not running the ball with any sort of uh, burst or decisiveness anymore. He's rolling out and he's just standing there, not rushing like he was last year. I mean, this is not the quarterback that was that was projected to be in the you know top ten odds, top, I think seven or eight odds to win the Heisman Trophy. That guy is dead and buried right now. And unless Frost and his staff can resurrect him, I I don't know what you do with the rest of the year. I mean, Frost has made it clear that this is his hand-picked guy. And is Frost too proud? Is he too arrogant to bench him? Because that shows that maybe he was wrong? I mean, I'm not sure what the case is there, but I think it's pretty obvious that Noah Vedral played against Indiana, a good 6-2 and two Indiana team, way better than Martinez played against a 2-6 and six Purdue team. That just is what it is. I think Vedro needs to be the quarterback right now until Adrian gets his head right, or at least it could be a wake-up call. Because um, right now, you're still you're still fighting for a, a bowl game right now, and you have to find a way to try to at least win two games. And I think right now, Vedro gives us the best shot to do that, and I think a lot of fans agree too. Um, moving on to the defensive side, again, out-formationed, out-schemed, out-coached, two games in a row. Indiana exposed a huge weakness off of a bye week, no less. Football's a copycat game. People, when you have shown that something works against you, other teams will copy it. it that's, that's just good coaching. And again, we show no adjustments being made. Um, this, these same little three, five-yard crossing routes go for 15 yards because no one's there. Uh, when we do blitz, everyone's picked up and the quarterback runs up the middle for 10 yards because there's no 
spy there to help with that or to cover any ground. Um, it's the same stuff. We let a two and six team with their backup quarterback put up their best game of he'll probably ever have in his career against us. And then we let their third string come in and lead an 89 yard touchdown drive. It's inexcusable. Um, I don't like to say that coaches should get fired, but at this point, at the end of the year, defensive coordinator needs to go. And honestly, probably a couple assistants on this team should probably go too. I know it's only two years into it, and I know there's other issues, and continuity is a big thing. I think a lot of us Husker fans would agree that the reason for where we're at is because we have changed so many coaches over time. And I'm not saying I'm not saying that Frost needs to go or anything like that. People who are saying that, I think it's still way too early. It's disappointing. It's frustrating, but it's still way too early for that. I think a big decision he has to make at the end of the year is what he's going to do with Eric Chenander. Is he going to fire him or is he going to keep his buddy because of, of continuity and things like that? To be honest, he needs to go because it's just it looks like. It looks like FCS teams could put up 30 on us right now. And every single Big Ten team we play is putting up 30. And this is a league that's not known for 30-point offenses, yet everybody is doing it. Um, it's, it's getting to the point where it's just almost disgusting and it's embarrassing. Um, I normally like to wear my black shirt jersey during these reviews. Uh, it's in my backpack right now because I went to put it on and I was literally too ashamed to wear it and the players should be too ashamed to even have a black shirt and the coaches especially that defensive staff shouldn't even be allowed to hand them out right now it's disgusting and it needs to change but there's there's nothing to change this year it is what it is these are the coaches we have this is the staff that our coach brought in these are the players that they have <coughs> again it's the same thing we've been talking about since ohio state Defensive line is fat and slow. Linebackers are just plain slow. Safeties have no physicality whatsoever. And the corners, yeah, they can run, but then they don't jump for balls and the quarterback has to throw the ball right to them basically to get interceptions. There's just no battler. There's no, there's no warrior on this defense. And it's really sad to see. I thought we had a couple. Um, you know, Darian Daniels does what he does, but he's only can be so effective in a 3-4 in a defense being the nose tackle. His job is to eat up for everybody else. And, yeah, he does a good job of that, but we have no one else around to make plays. And it's not going to change this year. I mean, we're going to have to find a way to score 40 points against Wisconsin to have a chance. Probably the same against Maryland. And you're probably going to need at least 35 against Iowa. And we're talking about an Iowa team who doesn't really score on anybody, and they're already going to put up 30-35 against us. It, it just it is what it is. I'm almost to the point where I've just accepted it, and I'm going to move on to next year, and I'm going to be very guarded with everything going forward. Right now, I still have trust in Scott Frost. I still think that the potential is so high with him. I'm trying to be as patient as I can, but... It, it's it's embarrassing. It's it's making me almost ashamed to be a Husker fan right now. Um, it, it's pretty sad, and I just I just don't see it getting better the rest of the year with with, with the teams we got. Um, you know, going into this year, I thought Wisconsin and Iowa games at home were we were going to split those, and that was going to be the difference between a nine or uh, an eight to nine or a nine to ten win season and now we're not even going to a bowl game so I'm just kind of at a loss for words and just kind of hurt and I'm just accepting that it is what it is and I sure hope Frost does the right things going forward and that's really all I can say uh, so um, next week we have a bye normally I do a prediction I think I'm gonna take a look at Frost's tenure here um, look at wins versus losses certain stats just to compare and I'm probably gonna sadly compare it to the Riley era because it's really the only thing we have to compare it to right now um, and I honestly I, I already know the wins and losses Riley has more and that's that's really sad but um, like I said guys that's kinda all I have I'm just kind of at a loss I, I hope you guys comment on the video I'd like to know your thoughts do you think it's more of a whole staff or do you think it's more defensive coordinator do you think adrian should be benched do you think vedral should be playing um are you like me and think all the black shirts should be stripped and taken away from this team um 
that's kind of where I'm at with it. I'd sure like to hear your guys' opinions. Um, I'm sure you guys are hurt just like me. And, hell, if you need to talk about it, let's have discussions. It'd be great to have them with you guys. Uh, but for now, this is Seth with Off Sports signing off.